to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I am Chris. With me tonight, as always, is... Jesse? Hello. <laughs> ah, see, I thought you would actually say your name. Like, I'm Jesse. And then, oh, I'm... <laughs> you break from the, the, the tradition, but that's okay. When you were talking, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was going to do like, I don't know, rock on or something. But it's like, ah, this is not the rock on show. It is the holiday show. So it's just, It is the holiday. <laughs> the holiday extravaganza. So, uh, well, yeah, we thought we'd talk about uh, gift ideas for uh, guitar players. Right. Uh, and so... Here's a recommendation on how to use this show. Guitar players, share this show with someone who may not be a guitar player, but you want to get a present from. There you uh, go. Just discreetly send them the link and say, <laughs> I think you should hear this show. All right. It would behoove you. <laughs> yes. And uh, or if you are a guitar player and you want a present from a guitar player and you want to stimulate this thought of, hey, I should get a, you know, this person should give me a present, then go for it and uh, send this link discreetly to them as well. you got to check out this guitar podcast. Yes, it's fantastic. It just so happens I sent you the holiday special. <laughs> so, all right. I think actually by saying that the cat is now out of the bag. Um, for those of you, though, that did come across this show who are uh, not guitar players and you're thinking, I don't know how to get a present for my loved one, friend, random person I meet on the street, <laughs> my who plays guitar. Favorite maybe, guitar maybe, podcaster. I was going to say that, yes. <laughs> podcaster, right? Um, you can uh, – you, I would suggest do the following. Just ask them what they want. And if you don't want to do that and you want to surprise them, then what you should do is sneak into their area where they keep their guitars. <laughs> you should probably know this person first. And then yeah. uh, take pictures. <laughs> don't break into houses. Yes. <laughs> break in and rings like it. Then, you know, you should know this person before you sort of encroach in their private space. And, you know, take pictures of what they have. Take uh, If you find string boxes, it's probably the strings they like to use. Take pictures of those. If you find picks laying around, that might be the picks they like to use. Take pictures of those. Uh, take pictures of their guitars, whatever you can find, and then go to your local, you know, mom and pop or whatever um, guitar shop and say, hey, I've got this friend who plays guitar. I want to get them a present. Here's what they have. What could I get them to go along with that? Here's their musician's friend catalog with the uh, bookmark right in this page and the Sharpie circling around this. Do you carry this? <laughs> there happens to be five gold stars around this object. <laughs> I think you might want it. So um, anyhow, so here you go. We're going to just basically spend the show talking about different gift ideas, some obvious, some not so obvious for uh, guitar players. And we hope that you find uh, this useful. And I thought we would start with the under $20 sort of uh, gift because that's sort of, uh, in fact, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to mention is way under 20 bucks. Yeah. yeah. You know? And um, these are some easy things to get people. Stocking stuffers or just simple presents, um, guitar strings, picks, guitar tuner. You know, I mean, these things are probably picks you can get for a buck or two, a mm -hmm. pack of picks. Um, strings, you're looking at $10 or less depending on the type of string. Right. right. And then uh, tuners, yeah, 20 bucks or less. Depending Depends on, on the tuner, yeah. What you get, you know. And then also cables, Inexpensive cables, you can get somewhat in that price, especially the shorter ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, guitar players can always use cables. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think these are pretty solid $20 um, presents. Now, sure. Can, oh, good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say maybe a strap if there's uh, sure. That's nice they need straps. Depends on, on the strap. Some of the like nice leather ones are more than 20 bucks. Sure. Um, but many options are less. Yeah. Um, a capo if they don't have one. Uh, or if they have more than one guitar in more than one area, they might want more than one. Um, so those are a couple of things. And then like other little things like um, consumables, like guitar polish, rags, a nice microfiber rag type of thing. Those can be good too. Yeah, small tools, small screwdrivers, uh, 
those kinds of things. You can even find, um, if you really want to get specialized, sort of the, the gauges. You know, I, I'm at a loss for words now, but I will tell you the spacings. Yeah. Um, oh, the yeah. feeler gauges. Yeah. The feeler gauges. Yes. Thank you. Lost, yeah. well, I lost for words. Um, things like that. Under 20 bucks, guitarists can definitely. You know what's interesting? You might actually go to a, a store and, or, and just ask the guy, what do you got for less than 20 bucks? Because there's some stuff like um, like finger ease and fast fret or, or a different kind of the guitar polish that a person may not even use. It may not be, quote, his favorite. But it's funny because like guitar players, like sometimes I don't even think about trying new stuff. But it'd be kind of neat if somebody got me something just to check out. Yes. And although you have to be willing to be like, well, if they don't like it, they're just never going to use it. And that has to be OK. <laughs> But it's a it's a sub twenty dollar gift, so it's sure. A, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I, you know, along those lines, don't be too hung up on what kind of picks you get people. Because right. trying picks new picks can be fun. Yeah, that's true. It's good. It's nice to get them the picks they like to use. But if you don't know what picks they like to use, go to the guitar shop and just open up a bunch of pick drawers. They'll have them. They'll be the drawers of picks mm-hmm. and just choose a selection of interesting looking ones or different ones and. Get, wrap them up and give them to uh, your friend and just say, hey, you know, uh, have fun trying these out because it's right. the least expensive way of changing the sound of a guitar. And, of course, um, tab books, um, a subscription to a guitar magazine if he doesn't already have it or she doesn't already have it. Um, that kind of thing is always nice. A DVD about guitar stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all kinds of instructional DVDs out there. Oh, well. gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, yeah, there's, there's the, you know, there's, it's a wide open, which you can do for under 20 bucks. Um, and I think your idea of going to the guitar shop and just saying, hey, what do you have for less than 20 bucks is a great one. Yeah. Just try it. You're going to get something different. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can say this is the guitarist that has everything maybe. And maybe they'll get creative and, and find something. That's right. So when we were thinking about the price points, I was thinking the next price point being between 20 and $100. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do here as well. Um, the nicer cables or the longer cables, mm-hmm. you're looking at 20 to $100 for. Um, and then also a music stand. Yeah. Because if you're going to – if a person has tab books, a music stand is a really handy thing to have. True. In the, in the music. So you know what I think with that – immediately associated with guitars, but it's one of those things that's very helpful. Also, um, another thing that's less obvious would be a stool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Because if you're – especially if you're woodshedding and you're going to practice for a few hours, that could really make a difference. <laughs> yeah. Well, too, and, and they may already have a room where they practice and they may mm-hmm. already have a stool or a chair for that. But an extra stool for like the living room. Yeah. Oh, and it's funny because a lot of chairs just don't really work because they have arms or whatever the deal is. They're not really you know, optimal for like guitar practice. Yeah, but a nice – yeah, a good um, armless chair with a nice back or something like a drummer thrown almost. It might pivot but doesn't have you – know, maybe it has a back but doesn't have arms. That's the big thing. Yeah. That's very, a good idea. Yeah, very, very helpful. Uh, we'll do some other sort of non-obvious guitar stuff later, but uh, I was also thinking of uh, which are in this price range of twenty to one hundred dollars. Pedals start to become an option. That's true. You all know? kinds of electric electronic stuff, pedals, all in one things, headphone practice amps, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, practice amps are closer to the high end of this range. Typically. Dep- yeah, it depends on the amp. Yeah. Actually, um, what I said practice amp, but I meant like a little headphone amp type of thing. So you can yes. play without, you know, something you can throw in your in your case or your bag um, and not have to carry separately. But you could throw on headphones and actually get some sound, which is nice. Absolutely. Headphones are a good option anyway because, you know, you're practicing late at night. You don't wake up um, spouse. You don't wake up the kids. You don't want to, you know, or just if you have neighbors, you don't want to disturb them. You can plug your headphones into your amp and you're off and rolling. And – if this guitar player that you know records, there's nothing better than listening to your own music through headphones as you're making your recordings. Right. Um, so you can get any you know wired headphones from twenty to hundred bucks. If you wanted the wireless headphones, you're probably north of a hundred dollars at that point. Mm-hmm. I would guess. Um, so something to think about. Also think about a guitar case. If um, you're the guitarist that you know has just gotten into it. He or she might have purchased a starter pack. Right. And that likely came with a gig bag, which mm-hmm. is which is great, but not nearly as protective protective as a full case would be. Right. 
And you can go on to place like Musician's Friend or, or, or uh, I think even uh, Mono Price might even have cases nowadays. Yeah, right. If, you know, a hard shell case, you just want to make sure you know what type of guitar they have. They have a Les Paul type body versus a Strat body. Um, you might need to know a little bit about the guitar that you're trying to put into a case. Um, chances are, depending on the brand of the starter pack, it's probably a Strat body based on my observations. Yeah, probably. So uh, I'll, I'll say the other end of it, though, if they have a, a nicer guitar that did come with its own case and they don't have a gig bag, it might be nice to have a, get a quality gig bag. I mean, now I'm not talking about the fifteen twenty dollar thing right. with no padding, but um, unfortunately, these tend to cost almost as much as a case, some even more. But you can get a nice, well padded, you know, gig bag for under a hundred bucks. That if this person likes to, you know, go to gigs or jams or whatever the deal is, it can be easier to carry around. Um, I know I like to carry mine in, in gig bags. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's an option too. I, I, I'm afraid of gig bags. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> I have a really nice gig bag that my uh, studio my uh, studio came in, and it's a beautiful gig bag, and I've never used it. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, that, I've always had good – I mean I've never had anything like get dinged or nicked or broken because it's been in a gig bag. Of course, when I have a guitar in a bag, I, I realize that and I treat it accordingly. Right. That's true. But that's but true. for just yeah. throwing it in the back seat of a car or something like that to go to a, a jam, that's fine. I worry about sliding around. I don't know. I think it's terrifying. <laughs> me. It's, just, it's just me. You know, it's, it's my own personal hang up. Um, uh, what else can you think of? What else can you think of uh, between $20 and $100? Uh, we've mentioned most of the ones that I would think of. The other stuff tends to be like parts tends to be very specific. Yes. Um, tuning heads, pickups, you know, bridges, other kind of parts that unless you actually had a hard hint, right. <laughs> it's something, you know, but. Um, There's a wish list involved. Yeah, that, that's yeah. kind of hard. Even with pallet pedals, it's kind of hard to to get exactly what a person might like unless it's just like try something different. Yeah. Well, which, Depending on how well you know the person, it can be exactly that, right? I mean, you can find something used on Craigslist or eBay. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I've got a really nice pedal that I got for 25 bucks. Oh, that's true. Look you know? at all the used stuff. in the, and, and that's another thing. When you go into a store and you say, hey, I'm looking for something less than X amount of dollars, don't be afraid to say, well, what do you got used? Because, like, pedals, they, they don't pay the people hardly anything for them when they trade them in used. Right. And so, you know. And they're metal. They take a beating. Yeah. Uh, and so I wouldn't hesitate at all to buy a used pedal as a oh, gift no. from somebody uh, because you can get a really good discount on it. And it's one of those things where this is cool, something new to try. And if you don't like it and you're at the low end, the $20, $20 $30 range, you know, the person can sell it. Right. Or they can trade it for a pedal they like. You know, I wouldn't worry about it. But they can just have a little bit of fun with that, uh, right. that pedal. All right. So, yes, check out the used sections of things, um, especially your local shop. You'd be surprised what you might find. So the next level, and this is sort of the last level I thought we'd talk about in terms of pricing, is between $100 and $500. Now, if you want to spend more than $500, I will send you my personal wish list. <laughs> right. <All> right. Uh, <laughs> that's an awesome friend. How about uh, it? But here, you know, you've really started to open up to guitars. Mm -hmm. at this point and so you know your your friend may have a guitar that they really like they may have that nice strat or that nice prs or whatever that they really like but they want a gig yeah and they don't want to take the fifteen hundred dollar guitar <laughs> the shady part, right? right and you know so there are some really nice sub actually three hundred dollar guitars that are serviceable that you can get for gigging uh, certainly sub $500 guitars Absolutely, that you can get for gigging. And you can look at, for example, the Mexican Strats are usually around that price point, especially on a sale. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you can even go to the Squire. Um, um, I think the Classic Vibes might be below that point. I'm not 100% certain on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are good solid. Uh, Epiphone, Les Pauls, all day, less than 500 bucks on a pretty solid Les Paul. Yep. Um, some of their semi-hollows, you know, with a dot. That's easily obtained for under five hundred dollars, um, brand new. So you know you're opening that level up if you want to go that route um, for somebody. If you do get a guitar for somebody, I would recommend um, if you're in the shop, if you have the budget, ask them to set it up. Oh yeah, 
So they, they should do that even at that price level. Yeah, but gosh, I tell you what, I've been shocked the number of shops that don't do it. Oh yeah, hmm. unless you directly ask them. Well, that's why you ask them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you and know, the fact of the matter is, I mean, it depends on the level of the person that you're buying for. But um, it may be that um, even a 15 minute cursory setup will give a good experience for them. Yeah. You know, if they're more of a beginner. Right. Just so it's playable out of the box. And right. then if they're a more advanced person, they'll tweak it. Yeah. Right. They'll tweak it to there. But but give them that a better first experience with that instrument. Sure. Than they would have if they had the factory set up. Yeah. You know? And usually, I mean, you may be able to talk them into, hey, I want to buy this guitar, but I know it's been sitting on the wall for a bit. How about some new strings and set it up? Yes. <laughs> now, this depends on the on the uh, kind of personality of the buyer. I mean, some people are hesitant to ask for extra or what they consider extra. I don't consider those things extra, to be honest, if I was buying a guitar. But, you know, um, that's something to think about. Especially because, you know, what they'll probably put on there are $4 strings. Well, yeah, but I mean, they're probably but, still better than what's been on them. <laughs> yeah, they have long. Them for months or whatever the case might be, or as the guitarist, you know, travel the ocean to get to the U.S. Right. Um, you know, absolutely. Even the four dollar strings are better than what would probably be on them. Sure. So, you know, we get into that range of guitars. We also start talking about amps at this point. Absolutely. So you practice amps, but even some more serious uh, amps. I mean, I think you can get a um, Super Champ. Oh yeah, you start getting close to the um, the lower line, you know, tube, the classic thirties and the night train G twos and the Fender, whatever that is. <laughs> I think the Blues Junior is, is just 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 above five. Is that okay? I think it's like five thirty. So uh, if you've got the extra thirty bucks, this you know, fine. But um, you're certainly in the realm of really nice practice amps. Oh, absolutely, and there's a whole slew of modeling. Both modelers and modeling amps and all kinds of things. Well, in fact, the Fender Mustang 3. Indeed. A huge fan of that amp. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and that is a fantastic amplifier. I think it's around 350. I'll agree. That's nice. I really like the basement sound that thing gets. Yeah. It's it's a nice amp. And so there's a, a lot of options uh, open to you if under the $300 for amps. Uh, also... While we're thinking about guitars and amps, depending on the, the person that you're buying for, if they're handy or they don't have to be all that handy, think about a guitar kit. You can get kits where they can assemble their own guitar um, and you can get them from various places. I got mine from um, Grizzly and you can't see the guitar. Maybe for those of you on video, I'll turn it. Eh, it's too dark back there to see it. Um <laughs> But, uh, you know, you can assemble them. I'm not very good with my hands, and I was able to assemble it really with no problems. It's, it's mm -hmm. a rather playable instrument. <clears throat> uh, and it's a nice experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember the whole thing with your, uh, you know, I get the weekly updates. <laughs> and yeah, because cool. I was like, you know, how do I finish this thing? And, I mean, I knew I was going to stain it red. I had no problems with that. But I was like, what, what do you put on there for finish? And looking back on it, I should have just sprayed polyurethane. It. Yeah. But, <clears throat> it's hard to go wrong with that, but. Yeah, live and learn. So um, think about something like that. And then, of course, between $100 and $500, you're into the pedals, full open. To the oh, pedals, yeah. Except for some of the boutique ones or whatever. Yeah. But you know, you're, you're, you're wide open there. That's true. So what did I miss? I'm trying to think. I um, Well, the only other thing that you might think about that we haven't really talked about is if they already have – well outfitted with guitars and amps and all that sort of thing is recording. If they like to record, uh, if you think they might be into uh, recording a podcast or <laughs> or music, you know, recording their own songs, that kind of thing. So um, then there, it depends on their setup. So if they already have a PC that's decent or a laptop that's decent, then software is, well, actually free. You could get free software, but inexpensive under $100. Um, that might be something. Um, a USB microphone or uh, a nice little microphone preamp and microphone. Of course, now we get into all kinds of options as to what types of microphones and all that. Right. So definitely talk to a music store and say, I want to spend this and this is what I want to do. Um, if they like to be mobile and go write songs under a tree, then <laughs> you can get portable recorders that will allow them to either be a sonic notebook type of thing or a full-fledged multi-track. And these only – actually, they'll start below $100 um, and the full-fledged multi-tracks will be a few hundred nowadays. 
So it's a brave new world of recording. Yeah. It's amazing what's out there. Uh, if they want to be able to hook their guitar up to their computer, uh, I have uh, I can recommend uh, AudioBox USB by Presonus. It has mm-hmm. it's two ports, and each port doubles microphone or guitar, and uh, so two I should say two channel, and uh, works like a champ. I've had it for several years. It just sits on my desk, and uh, it's there when I need it. Yeah, and you're pump- pumping your microphone through it right now, aren't you? I am not. Oh, you're not? Okay. Yeah, a dirty little podcast secret. I'm using the built-in microphone for my Mac. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't gotten any complaints about audio quality, so it saves me several minutes of setup time. I see. Uh, well, now I'm, I'm sorry that I uncovered your dirty little secret. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. So, um, but there we are. Um, and then let's see. I also thought that we would talk a little bit about non-obvious things. We talked about a music stand. We talked about a stool. Mm-hmm. But there's some other things, too, that I would recommend. Um, consider a Bluetooth speaker. I was going to ask about that, seeing as how I noticed it in the back corner there. <laughs> yeah. That, something I received as a present earlier this year. And it's been fantastic for my guitar playing mm-hmm. because I can take uh, the songs and, on my phone and I can sync them to Bluetooth this the Bluetooth speaker and that is loud. Right. And now my amps absolutely can take a uh, MP3 player or my phone or whatever wired connection. I don't like playing through the amp. That's also playing the track. Right. And so, uh, I either have to play through a separate amp or now that I have the speaker, I'm good to go. Sure. It's plenty loud. It can, it can compete with my amps. Um, just fine. Uh, I mean, if I, if I turn my hundred watt amp plus amp past three, the windows are rattling anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I'm never, it's, it's not an issue. And so I would recommend that. Um, I would also recommend, uh, if you're in that higher end range, uh, an inexpensive tablet, mm-hmm. I find that my tablet is invaluable piece of, um, practice, um, sort of gear. And I've said this on the show before, but, you know, I can keep all the songs I'm working on in that. If I want backing tracks from YouTube, I can have, you know, those right there at my fingertips. I've got a metronome there. I've got I keep my my um, guitar lesson notes on my iPad. So if I want to back up and see, hey, where's that a uh, quick Google search. If I want to figure out how do you play, you know, a 13th chord or something like that. Right. It's all, it's all right there. And, and it's so portable. I, you know? Yeah, it's portable and you can get music stands for the iPad. Yeah. I have one. It's very handy. I can just put it right there. It's about music stand height and I have full control with the Bluetooth speaker. You know, I pair those two together and uh, yeah, I'm set. That's true. And for that, you know, while we're in that sort of uh, chain, um, a laptop, I mean, if you're looking in the $500 range, you can start getting into actual, I don't know. I think there is recording software for um, an iPad too. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Android versions if there are, but um, there's a lot more accessories for iPads. So right. <laughs> you can get like, you know, the, the recording you know, like microphones or whatever. Um, but probably even a better solution would be an actual laptop. Um, I don't know what Macs might have in that, <laughs> in the viable range, but I know PCs come pretty cheap now. So if you're going as high as like 500 bucks, you could get actually a serviceable laptop for multi-track recording and that sort of thing. Now, of course, I'll still need headphones and microphones and that sort of thing. So it does depend on what's going on. And we're, of course, it does a million other things. So we're not really in guitar land anymore. Sure. But, well, but it's it's certain, things, it's like, like I said, the less obvious kind of things that are guitar related. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. You're not going to get anything Mac for under 500 bucks. Yeah, right? I didn't think so. Well, that's not going to happen. But with an iPad, um, which you potentially could if you got one used, um, you can get the iRig, which is a, uh, a device that plugs into the iPad's headphone port. Mm-hmm. And on the other end is a quarter inch um, receiver for your guitar. Right. That's so cool. you plug your guitar right into the iPad, you're off, you're recording, yeah. whatever you want to do. Um, so I think the iRig is around $30. So that's a, you know in that $200 to $100 price range. Nice present for someone. It oh, yeah. may be compatible with Android. I don't know. I don't have an Android tablet. I would suspect not. It's probably a, an iPad connector. And I don't know if anybody has – again, I don't know if they have a standard that they use. So I don't know if there is such a thing for that. Well, it just goes into the headphone jack. Oh, 
Hmm. So that's why I was wondering. I'm not sure if it would work or not. That's a good question. And of course, you have to have the app to recognize it. Right. Um, so, uh, listeners, if anybody knows, yeah, <laughs> right to let us know. We should check that out. But certainly, if you have an iPad, that's a no brainer. I mean, for 30 bucks, I think that's that's a good thing to go with. Yeah. And I'm sure, I mean, if, if you want to go the tablet route, you can easily get an uh, Android tablet for under $500. Mm-hmm. And there'll be plenty of music apps that, you know, music related apps that you can get for yeah. that. And so I'm not I'm not just you know pushing the iPad. I just that's what I'm familiar with. That's what I have. Sure. Um, and then a little further from guitars and music, but still guitar related, is if your friend has a room that they do practice music in, you could get decorations for that room. <laughs> you know, for example, what I'm thinking of immediately is um, Fender has um, these sort of metal signs. Like, uh-huh. You know, and I have one. I don't have it hanging right now. But they have some really nice, like, sort of vintage-looking metal signs about, you know, Fender guitars. You can get, like, a poster of a favorite artist, get it framed. They can hang that up. Um, those kinds of things right. are also sort of nice. If you might be hesitant to get something guitar-related because you're not familiar with it, you could still support their hobby. You could still get a nice gift, you know, sort of in that way. Oh, yeah. And then if, they, if you know they play a certain brand, Fender, Gibson, Parker, whatever – a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and going with the uh, the decoration, I mean, there's also like the furniture angle, which could be anything like um, from a guitar stand, whether it be a single or a multiple stand. Because mm-hmm. I like those, you know, stands that hold five guitars. I'm looking at those now. I'll probably end up getting one. Yeah. Depending nice. on how many guitars a person has, of course. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, we're, we're sort of bad models, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I like the wall hangers, as, as everybody can see behind me. I have a three three guitar rack stand. I like that as well. Might mm-hmm. have to upgrade to a five at some point uh, because everything I have is full right now. Um, <laughs> that's true. So that, or like the normal person would just get rid of one. But uh, uh, so anyway, I, I don't know how helpful we've been with this episode since we pretty much just told you everything. Uh, <laughs> To say this is what we recommend, like the one thing we recommend, but I don't like to recommend one thing to people. No, because we're all different. Yeah, exactly. So I, I believe in options and stimulating that thought process of, you know, what can you do for your friend? Sure. And so, you, listener, know your guitar playing friend slash significant other or whatever better than we do. <laughs> so. And before, um, before we end the show, though, what I thought we would do, uh, Jesse and I, was basically share what we would love to find under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> on, on our holiday morning, whether that's, you know, a certain day of Hanukkah, Christmas, whatever it is you celebrate, what would you like to find sort of uh, on the floor? And I'll start because I, I, I sort of sprung this on Je- Jesse pre-show <laughs> and I don't think he's had much time to think. So I will start in all fairness. And I've got a couple of things and I, I'm going sky's the limit here for um, prices here. And so I don't expect to get any of these. Um, I've fallen in love recently with Fender's new bass breaker amp. <laughs> I was have playing, you now? Yes, I was playing. Are you it. cheating on your Mustang? <laughs> uh, a little bit. A little bit. Um, I was playing it at a local shop. They were having this event, and I went over there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to play this because last time I was there, I didn't have a chance to play it. Somebody walked away from it, so I grabbed a guitar. Actually, I grabbed one of the Jimi Hendrix Strats. And um, played through. I played other things too through the Space Breaker. I wasn't going to just play the Jimi Hendrix strap, but I was going to play you know, a couple of things. And I have to say, that's one of the first amps that I have played where I've noticed a big effect with the dials. Really? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can make different sounds with the Mustang, no problem. Okay. But <clears throat> with this Space Breaker, I started moving the treble knob and I was like, wow, that's different. Mm. Like to my ears, I was hearing, and it was just a dynamic range of sounds I could get out of this amp. Now I was doing the seven watt, it's a one by ten combo. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, I've been doing some research into them, and apparently they're the um, Baseman circuit, um, but sort of with a Marshall kind of twist to it. Oh, so a Baseman Blues Breaker hybrid they're kind of talking about yeah basically it being blues breaker okay without using those words they're just calling it a bass breaker yeah but there's two names you've got you know the blues breaker you got the basement it sounds pretty sweet 
Um, I was also listening to one of the smaller, well, I think it might have been actually the 7 watt head mm -hmm. through a 1 by 12 cab, and that sounded pretty good too. But the um, the 1 by 10 combo 7 watts, that's perfect for this room. Yeah, so what kind of price are we talking here? 450 Really? Yeah. For a 1 by 10 For a 1 by 10 Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not... Not awful. And yeah. so definitely something I was interested in. Um, so what else would I, would I be you know, super happy to find under my tree? There is, of course, the one that got away, the 60th anniversary Strat. I mentioned that earlier yes. in the year on this show. That would be... With the compound radius fretboard. Very cool. Yeah. Even though it has the gold hardware I'm not a huge fan of, it just it sounded and played so good. Well, you're going to own one someday. I probably will. And then sort of just as a, you know, different kind of thing, I've been listening to a lot of PRSs online. Mm. Yeah. And, Everybody uh, eventually ca catches a PRS bug for some amount of time. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> I think it's time to have one of those in my collection. Not immediately, but, you know, soon. And oh, goodness. Happen. Are we talking an SE? Are we talking a uh, No, no, no. We're going to do, do it right. Um, okay. So I'm going to do the S2. Yeah. Or the Vela. The S2 mm -hmm. Vela or the S2 Standard. But if I do the S2 Standard, I think I'd want the 24. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes sense. You don't have a 24. I don't have a 24. And I like the Vela. The Vela has the humbucker in the bridge and has a single coil at the neck. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, it's a fairly new model for PRS. Yeah. Uh, and I've been listening to some videos online. I was like, wow, that's a nice sound. But I also like the, the standard because I use coil tap. And I've got coil tap double humbucker guitars, but they're all Les Pauls. Right. Right. Well, and, PRS has a pretty flexible setup. I mean, if you're talking about a dual humbucker guitar, PRS um, pioneered like wiring options that gave you a lot of flexibility back in the late 80s. Right. And, um, and they're still really good at that. Right. Their pickups are good for splitting and stuff too. They tend to hold a, a good tone. A lot of uh, humbuckers tend to be a little weaker when they, though they're all weaker when you split them. But some just don't work well. Yeah, and the I've RSs noticed, do. Yeah, and I've noticed the weakness, especially with my three thirty nine. Mm -hmm. You know, I've noticed that there. Not so much with the Les Paul, the Florentine, but the three thirty nine definitely yeah. noticed. Um, and so I was thinking, wow, the, the, as, the more I think about it, I really like the uh, the the standard twenty four. And I'd want the S2. I mean, the SEs are fine guitars. Don't get me wrong. But I, it would be nice to have that, that centerpiece of the collection. It's true. And since I am from Maryland originally. <laughs> just you know, sense. Maryland built guitar. Sure. That's right. It just makes sense. So anyhow, um, direct guitar related stuff. That would be it. Non an indirectly related thing would be an iPad. Because mine, as actually <laughs> on Sunday, as you see, it's, it's starting a little long in the tooth. It's a little pokey. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a, yeah, to say the least. So uh, I use that thing so much that uh, it's uh, it would be a convenience to have a, a new one. It's not critical, but it would be a convenience. Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. So my wish list consists of, let's <laughs> say, if we don't include the iPad, about – two thousand dollars worth of guitars unless we also get the strat and if we put the strat on there we're looking at three thousand dollars worth of guitar and amps right so there's my wish list <laughs> so my wish list um they, they don't really have it on the rack probably the closest thing that i would get if i had to just choose a guitar off the rack would be a paul reed smith hollow body too Ooh, which yeah. is like the guitar that my court is sort of modeled after. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just nice. Um, but yeah, $3,000 guitar. <laughs> yeah. And I hope they don't even come with steel frets. So what it would be is a hollow body two guitar that I would then have refretted with steel frets and have somebody install Floyd Rose on it probably. So <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, guitar-wise, I, I, that's about it. I think I'm pretty good with guitars. Yeah. Um, amps, so now I'm thinking about a blue <laughs> the the bass, bass breaker because <laughs> that sounds like a good concept because yeah. I am a sucker for the for the uh, the basement sounds. You gravitate um, every time you come over and you play the the, uh, the Mustang. It's on yeah. the, 
the basement setting. I do, yeah. which is funny because like when I play by myself, it's like it's, I go for like the Van Halen sort of, you know, eighties, you know, metal sort of sounds because that's right. what I play. But when we're doing like more bluesy stuff, I, I really like the, uh, you know, the basement. So, um, or I mean, I'm liking that. Um, I, I gotta got and play again the the. Uh, the five watt uh, black star as a practical, maybe okay. actually getting kind of thing. Yes. That's something I I'm looking on eBay for the, you know, for a cheap one. Um, so, but if I'm stretching and I can hit, <laughs> I hit the lottery Stretch. or something, yes. of course, if I hit the lottery, I'll have somebody custom build me the hollow PRS with the, well, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. um, they have a, a modeling amplifier called a Kemper. I don't know if you've seen this in the catalog. Yep. It is the pinnacle of like modeling. And like guys who don't like modelers, you know, who are just like tube heads, like that's the one that they would deign to play. Um, the problem is, of course, it's huge. You know, it takes up a few rack spaces. They don't have something you can sit on a, a desktop or anything. Right. So you've got to have, you know, the room for it or whatever. And what it it just does modeling better than anything. And you can get um, – uh, they build impulses. You can actually model any amplifier, you know, and people can put models out there and they're really good. Um, but they're very pricey too. I'm trying to remember. It's like a couple of grand for like their high line one. So that's a lot more than like a $300 pod or something. <laughs> There's some big names that take this on tour with them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's one of those things where, I mean, the great thing about tube amps is they sound like tube amps. The bad thing about tube amps is you get a couple of sounds, you know, yeah. And with this Kemper, it's like you have whatever sound you want. I mean, it's the same strength as any modeler, except that what they're saying is this thing is, um, you know, as good as – well, it depends on who you talk to, of course. Right. right. But it's closer to a tube amp, you know, for a lot of the people who don't like modelers in general. Now, truthfully, I'm not that much of a tone snob. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good with the modelers I have anyway. But – Again, if I hit the lottery, I would right. have one. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, actually, we're probably some of the, the worst people to do guitar podcasts because we're not tone snobs. So, I know. You know we're not, we uh, we I, need to get some tone snobs in here. <laughs> I'm very happy with my Mustang, but the bass breaker was just a, a sound I loved. And yeah. uh, maybe if I spent enough hours with my Mustang, I could reproduce that. Right. But I don't know if I want to. You know, it's a lot of time. Sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, before we close up, too, uh, I do. I feel like I should mention we're talking about all these prices. I had a chance on Saturday to play a three thousand dollar guitar. Ooh, what was this? It was a Strat. Mm-hmm. All right, and I will be honest with you, and maybe this will draw enough criticism that we'll actually get a comment on the show. <laughs> well, as I was playing it, my response was meh. Yeah. It really was. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I, I thought this thing was going to be like, yeah, this is going to be like the greatest playing experience I will ever have. Yeah. It's fine. Well, in any ways, yeah. I prefer my, the Strat over my shoulder back there. Actually, in every way, I prefer it. Sure. Uh, I wasn't, this was okay. It, I don't know. I don't know where the $3,000 went. Yeah, you know, but and hmm, that's a good question. And the thing is, a lot of it, and I, I've had that experience before. I mean, when I worked at Sam Ash, we'd get all the the stuff in, you know, and so I'd play like high line Gibson guitars, and I'm like, why are people spending thousands on this Gibson guitar, you know? Um, and now, I mean, back then there even was less. Um, similarity between the lower lines and, and the higher ones like the Epiphone versus Gibson. I think now with the computer controlled manufacturing, Epiphones are closer to Gibson than they've ever been. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. yeah and same with this you know, Mexican strats versus American and whatever the deal is. Um, and so, yeah, there's, I don't know. It's going to be what you want. If you have the money to spend fine. If you, if you really don't want to blow three grand on a guitar, there's really no reason to do so. Unless you want something totally wacky, custom built or whatever. Right. Which, well, then that's different. That's, yeah. you know, that's very different. Yeah. So anyway, I thought I'd just mention this we're talking about. I know it's not holiday themed or whatever, but I thought I would just bring this up as we're talking about the prices of things. So, folks, really hope that you um, got something out of the show. You got some ideas maybe for some gifts or some ideas, things that you want now. Like, oh, I didn't think about that. I want that now. <laughs> Great. You're know, fantastic. Glad to help. If you, if you think <laughs> you want something – Please leave us a, uh, a, a note on either, uh, YouTube. You can email you can email me, Chris, at JesterCat.com. Uh, you can tweet us at SST Show. If you have other ideas, we would love to hear from you. Um, until next time, folks, just keep picking and grinning. 
Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 